You every Monday to Friday from 8 to 9 a.m. I am with Yaya Sangarun, and together with me is Kun Nirasha Malisa. สวัสดีครับคุณดีนาครับสวัสดีค่ะ Good morning ค่ะคุณวิทยา So Voice of the Nations brings you updates and what's happening in Thailand, and I hope you enjoy our program. To watch Voice of the Nations previous episodes, please visit our YouTube channel at the Nation Thailand and on Facebook page. Just search the words "the Nation Thailand." Mm -hmm. So please stay tuned with us uh, for today. Our live interview, we will talk about Thainess and its soft power that will help a strong impact to help generate the the revenues in the country. With our guest for today, Kunamon Pachomrat, Managing Director of Next Step Company Limited. So let's start our day today. It's the first day of February. Tuesday, the 1st of February, 2022, with the development of the Sunday's Laksi by-election. So, Kun Ritaya, a few nights ago, there was a politician who was apparently happy with the results of the Bangkok by-elections. Mm -hmm. And even though, although he had nothing to do with the contest, uh, can you guess what, who are we talking about? Uh, Mr. Tam something. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, yes. So it's the former Palang Prasharat Party Secretary General, Captain Tamanat Prompao. So he joined other parties in congratulating opposition Pura Thai Party for its Bangkok by-election win. So Tamanat was earlier expelled from the Palang Prasharat along with the 20 other, 21 other MPs of his fiction. He appeared to be satisfied with Palang Prasharat's defeat and described Pure Thai as the enemy of my enemy. As soon as the initial vote count showed that Pure Thai Surachat Tian Tong had won the Bangkok constituency night by election, Tamanat posted in English on his Facebook that he was happy to see voters exercising their ballot. And he put it as, this is democracy. Uh, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. <laughs> wow. So before joining the Palang Prasharat, Kun Thamanat was with Pure Thai, and he is known to be close to the de facto leader to Kun Thaksin Chinawat, or former Thai Prime Minister. And while Surachat, Kun Surachat Tian Tong, yesterday, uh, he later led his team to the Laksi and mm -hmm. Jatujak district on to thank you the um, Laksi residents or the citizen for his victory in the by-election for Bangkok constituency on Sunday. For Kun Surachat, he is also a former MP from the constituency and the unofficial results show that Surachat winning com uh, having poll around 29,416 votes he said that this victory comes with great responsibility to serve citizen, adding that he wanted to prioritize improving people's quality of life. He vowed to hear the citizens' complaints individually in order to deal with each issue properly. And he also reassured his voters that he is ready to work as an opposition MP to convey citizens' complaints to the government once the election commission approves by the, the by-election result. And lastly, he added that he hopes that the government will pay more attention to citizens' comments and their interests. And meanwhile, Pure Thai Party leader uh, Cholanan Si Gao he also said that this by-election had proved that citizens have witnessed the government's mismanagement and want to pave the future for their children. He said that the people expressed the messages even though the number of people exercising the right to vote was low. Kun uh, Nancy Gao urged other political parties to focus on how they can serve the people and create good things under the, a democratic form of government with the king as the head of state. 
and he declined to comment on a Facebook post by the uh, Kun Thamanat, which say that the enemy of my enemy is my friend. But Kun Cholanan say that anyone working with the Pure Thai Party must not side with dictatorship in line with the party's visions. He also warned the Deputy Prime Minister Pravit Wong Suwan that the by-election results are the citizen punishment to show that they do not support the undemocratic political parties and Kun Cholanan also predicted that there would be fewer than 50 Palang Pracharat MPs left in the future. He asked Prime Minister Prayutan Osha to dissolve parliament and give the authority back to the citizen to choose their next government. The Pur Thai leader will also thank you, the Prime Minister Prayut, for his love for citizen if he dissolves the parliament. And he also called on Prayut's promise that he would remain in power for no more than eight years, and the deadline will be on August 3rd this year. The Pur Thai leader also urged the Prime Minister to be concerned about the country and its citizens rather than his own position and the benefits of his team. After the by election, many people are calling for the Bangkok governor election that is long overdue. And there were some answers in this regard to this matter on Monday. Interior Ministry and Election Commission officials will meet on February 21st to schedule the long overdue elections for the governors of Bangkok and Chonburi's Pattaya. According to Interior Minister General Anupong Pao Jinda, the elections will likely take place in May. He was responding after a senator inquired about the progress of gubernatorial uh, sorry, elections during a Senate meeting on Monday morning. Kudandupong expects the election commission to submit the election days for cabinet approval and announce them by the end of March. After the days are officially announced, the election must be held within 60 days and May was a suitable choice since it contains a no long, uh, no long holidays or religious festivals. Kudandupong pointed out that the election commission had the final decision on polls dates. He added that the election for Bangkok governor and members of Bangkok Metropolitan Council will be held simultaneously. So from Thai politics coming up next, let's find out the key developments after the Thailand and Saudi Arabia restore their relationship. Right. An advisor to the Commerce Minister Kun Malika Bunmi Dragoon Mahasuk said that the government is working on ways to build and strengthen trade relations with Saudi Arabia. Thai Prime Minister Prayut Chan Ocha, meeting with Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman last week, has provided an opportunity to restore bilateral relations. It is likely to see flexibility in many aspects, such as travel between the two countries, trade and job opportunities for Thai people. Commerce Minister Jurin Laksana visit has come up with a seven-point plan to stimulate trade and relationship with Saudi Arabia. The seven points plan are, first, organizing, mem uh, organizing seminars to educate Thai business about marketing and consumer behavior in Saudi Arabia under Saudi Vision 2030 strategy. Second, organizing a trade delegation of businessmen to visit Saudi Arabia and from Saudi Arabia to Thailand to strengthen relationships and build networks between them. Third, organizing promotional activities for Thai products with leading supermarkets in Saudi Arabia, such as rice, halal food, and fruit. Fourth, inviting Thai entrepreneurs to participate in trade shows in Saudi Arabia, such as food and halal products exhibition. The fifth uh, is publici publicizing the image of halal food products through online channels. Next one, the sixth, inviting Saudi leaders to join online trade negotiations or online business matching. The seventh, inviting leaders from Saudi Arabia to join Thai net international trade, whether through regular hybrid or online format. Saudi Arabia is trading market with potential for growth. Jurin has been focused on this market from the beginning. In addition to trading with Saudi Arabia, 
It is also a trade gateway to many other countries in the region. Middle Eastern countries want to re uh, restructure the economy by expanding the tourism sector, the service sector, and the joint venture sector. This will result in a large demand for imported products and production capacity. That's an opportunity for Thailand. Businessmen from Thailand and Saudi Arabia are eyeing joint ventures, coupled with the new Saudi Vision 2030 policy, which aims to increase investment. Saudi Arabia needs investment expertise from Thailand and the fields of farming, with focus on shrimp, fish, and chicken raising, hospital operations, hotels, restaurants, franchise businesses. At the same time, Saudi businessmen are also interested in investing in Thailand in the fields of food, energy, and mineral products. Trade between Thailand and Saudi in 2021 was $7.3 billion, US dollars, an increase of 31.8%, comprising of $1.6 billion of Thai exports and $5.6 billion of imports. Apart from Saudi, Arabia, China is also a market for exporters for Thai fruit. Montong durian from Thailand is dominating the Chinese fruit market. Kun Malika, as advisor to the Commerce Minister, revealed that fresh durian was China's highest imported fruit since 2020, with an import volume of 0 0.575 million tons worth 2.3 million US dollars. It marks a 44% year-on-year increase, accounting for 22.4% of China's total fruit import. At present, China allows the import of fresh durian only from Thailand, especially the Montong variety. It also imports whole frozen durian from Malaysia, but the quantity is still low. Imports from Malaysia account for less than 10% of the total market volume while Thailand has a near monopoly with over 90% share. The majority of consumers, nearly 88%, are female and are among those with high purchasing power, especially those between the ages of 24 and 30 through food shops and e-commerce platforms. Entrepreneurs wishing to export Thai durian to the Chinese market may need to analyze factors related to the demand from such main consumer groups while Thailand and Saudi Arabia regained their ties, Cambodia has also enhanced tourism relations with Saudi Arabia. This is a matter that benefits the Thai side as well. Huh. So let's have a look at the relationship between Thai, uh, Cambodia and Saudi Arabia. So Cambodia and Saudi Arabia have actually pledged to strengthen tourism ties and launch direct flights between the two kingdoms. Mm -hmm. So the vow comes after the Phnom Penh issues and announcement heralding Cambodia as a safe travel destination. The two sides, the statement was made following a meeting between Minister of Tourism Tong Khun and Saudi Ambassador Saud FM Al Suelim. The two sides uh, also discussed strategies to draw in more Muslim sightseers to Cambodia and Kun Kun emphasized that the country is keen to receive Muslim tourists, owning its in part to targeted initiatives taken by his ministry that are designed to put the nations on the map as an appealing holiday destination for this group of travelers. The Cambodian government has put roadmaps in place to restore and spur travel across the kingdom during and after the COVID-19 crisis that rely heavily on vaccination and roll out various strategic policies to underpin a tourism recovery in the region. Cambodia is a safe tourism destination, nothing that of, of more than 400 international attendees from 27 countries receive a negative result on PCR tests taken prior to departure. And um, the ambassador, Al Suwelim underlined that Riyadh has set a 2030 vision to transform Saudi Arabia into a major global tourism hub. He vowed to bring up the issue to Riyadh and push for the necessary work to be completed in the future. The minister also touched on the possibility of launching direct flights between the kingdoms to enhance the bilateral flow of travelers, as well as increase the number 
of visitors from other countries. He also suggested a direct Riyadh Phnom Penh flight or even multi destination routes to a combination of Phnom Penh, Sihanouk Wheel, and Siem Reap Town. The ambassador revealed that Saudi Arabia plans to set up a route in May from Riyadh to Phnom Penh via Bangkok and that the Saudi tourism minister would be on the inaugural flight to Cambodia. Right. So that must be a really huge and fresh excitement for those in the trade and business sectors, Kundina. Well, next is a fresh, as well, a fresh survey showing the overall picture of what Thai consumers are facing in food prices. Okay, we yes. got a survey here. Mm -hmm. Yes, so let's have a look at the survey. Pang Thang Pendin again. <laughs> all over everything is so expensive so a survey shows that thai are struggling to survive as food prices have hit the roof so food has become more and more and more expensive mm -hmm. and the thai people they want the government to tell the truth about the reason behind the rising so there's a survey conducted of 1383 people uh by sondusit poll from january 24th to 27th of january on rising commodity prices, and it revealed the following. According to these following questions with products, which product is the most expensive? And almost 100% ka kumita ya ha, they say it's pork. Mm -hmm. <laughs> number one, well, pork. Mm -hmm. Number one pork is no doubt, because the price now, as you may know, it's about 250 to 300 baht per kilo due to the uh, African swine flu. And uh, coming at the second, the product that is the most expensive is the curry on rice or mm. kao rat gang. Side oh. dishes, mm -hmm. cooked to order dishes, you know, the kao rat gang when you go to the restaurants and um, order like two or three um, side dishes come on top with the rice. That's called kao rat gang. <laughs> That's coming to the second, that's uh, the price is more and more expensive. So when we ask about the, uh, what is the reason for rising prices, uh, the people say animal disease and half of them say hoarding and price manipulation. Mm. Mm -hmm. And the next question is what steps can people take to solve uh, the problems uh, with 77.20%. 70%, almost 78% say managing expenditure and 66% say reducing consumption. Going to the question with what should the government do to solve the problems? A lot of people say the government should be transparent and half of them say they should keep the prices stable. And when asking which organization should tackle the problems, Coming up with 79.60% is the Commerce Ministry, with 57.88% coming with the Agriculture and Cooperatives Ministry, and 55.82% is Prime Minister Prayut Chan Ocha, who should tackle the problem too. When the question asks how much can a government be trusted to solve the problem, a lot have, have uh, responded they should you know, it's slightly un untrustworthy, while mm -hmm. just only 35% say totally untrustworthy as well. So last question is, how long do people think that they will have to shoulder such high prices? Mm -hmm. This have, um, the answer has divided in four, in four parts. So about 34% or 35% say that up to three months, 28% mm -hmm. is up to six months. 80% is up to one month and below than 20% or 17% is more than six months. Wow, that tells something about the, the future of the government. <laughs> it is, but the thing is right now, there is a lot of, there are a lot of problems for the government to tackle and the high uh, cost of living is one of the major concern because a lot of things have uh raise their prices and right. the only thing that haven't been raised at all is the labor costs the labor costs right the labor costs yes 
Mm -hmm. So ongoing next is an issue that should uh, is about vaccination. Kun Vithya ka. The right. question is, should the children get vaccinated? Mm -hmm. Okay, Thailand kick off its vaccination program for children aged five to eleven on Monday. There's going to be a, a lot of discussion on this issue too. Public Health Minister Kun Anutin Chan Virakun presided over the launch at Queen Silicon National Institute of Child Health in Bangkok at Greece. Children with seven uh, underlying diseases were first in the queue for the jabs. The youngers, the youngsters, will receive Pfizer vaccine from a batch of three hundred thousand doses that have already arrived. Another three hundred thousand doses per week will be sent to fill Thailand's order of ten million Pfizer doses within the next three months. The total shipment should arrive one month ahead of schedule. Children will receive two Pfizer jabs, three to twelve weeks apart. The favorite gap between injections is eight to twelve weeks, which offers higher immunity and fewer side effects. Thailand is currently registering the uh, Sinovac vaccine for use in youngster children aged over three. Mm -hmm. And while on the other hand, a mm -hmm. group of anti-vaxxers wrote into Bangkok uh, yesterday to demand that the education ministry stop forcing school children to take COVID-19 jabs. Well, the group from Chiang Mai People Protecting Rights, led by Dr. Uh, Not Pop Tham, Pop Tham Jai, began their 900 kilometer journey on bicycle in mid-December to the education ministry, urging that the parents, uh, saying that the matter about the education ministry is urging parents to allow their five to 11 years old to take the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine. However, the group wants the ministry to reconsider their resolution and handed a letter explanation their misgivings According to the letter was received by a uh, senior education ministry office who promised to pass it on to the minister. The group said that even though the education ministry claimed that the shots will be provided voluntarily, that was not really the case as many schools were either forcing the children to get jab or imposing other measures like stopping them from attending class or insisting parents to pay for the rapid antigen test. The group says that the COVID-19 vaccines are alienating children and affecting their mental status and rights. The group also alleged that COVID-19 vaccine was still at trial stage and could affect children's health. This group said children have a low risk of picking up immunity is high enough for them to recover quickly. And they also pointed out that the vaccine does not really keep the virus at bay. A, according to available data shows that the vaccine has many side effects. So schools should stop forcing students to take them. Huh? Mm, I see. Mm -hmm. Well, getting vaccinated, um, as according to the news, is also a matter of uh, personal decisions. Right. But in some countries, it's it's mandatory like let's say in in austria it's mandatory mm -hmm. everyone must be vaccinated mm -hmm. but in some like france uh unvaccinated people will not be allowed to enjoy public areas or public mm -hmm. activities like going into a cafe mm -hmm. sitting in the restaurants if you are not uh, vaccinated for example so it's it's really hard to say because there are those people who get vaccinated and they also get side effect too so I think this matter is um, it's sensitive and sometimes people say it's a matter of luck. Right. So <laughs> we have to wait and see what's going to happen between the privacy issue and also public health issues. This is going on not only in Thailand and many countries around the world. Right? Mm -hmm. okay. Let's move on from, uh, from vaccine to something, <laughs> something maybe nice and relaxing. <laughs> Right, we should have. Okay, there are so many 
popular charts in Hollywood movies, and mm. most of them come to the theaters here in Thailand. But there is one chart that could not come to visit us. Oh, uh, a foreign film producer requests to use three popular grabby beaches as the setting for a sci-fi action film, where the request was turned down recently. Mm. Grabi Governor Kun Puttipong Sri Ma said Deep Blue Productions request to choose the Meg 2 is very popular chart, uh, ancient chart from mm. April 16 to May 9 was rejected. The company wanted to use uh, Pratnang, Ao Ton Sai, and Riley beaches as well as build a set near the Chelsea Grabi Resort in Mueang District. The filmmakers were also planning to shoot a helicopter landing scene on Ao Ton Sai, uh, as well as use jet skis in a rescue mission scene at Riley Beach. The governor said representatives of the public and private sector met online last week to discuss ways of boosting the economy and rejected the film production, mainly mm -hmm. due to the jet ski scene. The Kirby tourism declaration prohibits the use of jet skis scooters, banana boats, and beach umbrellas on Krabi beaches. The decoration has been in use for five years and was extended by another two years on March 25, 25th, sorry, 2021 by Natural Resources and Environment Minister Wara Wood Silapa Acha. The decoration prohibits all activities that can harm Krabi's environment including the use of scooters and jet skis. The meeting also noted that Grabi's marine park and office had received jet skis, but they chose not to use them. The meeting also said the plan to build a bridge on the Riley Beach and closing it from April 16 to May 9 would seriously affect tourism operators, resorts, and tourists who want to visit this popular beach. The governor said that though the film production would have created a lot of jobs and brought cash to the province, it would have been environmentally damaging. So mm. the movie is the Meg. The first Meg was released in 2018. Uh, it tells the story of a rescue diver played by Jason Statham, who helps a group of scientists battle the primitive chart Megalodon that has escaped from a deep ocean trench. It's called Mariana Trench. And the, the film was successful, crossing 530 million worldwide from a budget of 178 million, with 153 million in most of that coming from China. Because the, there are Chinese characters there in the movie, Kunina. Talking about Krabi Beach, right? Krabi <laughs> beaches are famous, uh, but we got other beautiful beaches as well. Uh, which beach you like to recommend? Um, Which one? For me, it's more convenient. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> for, for me, it's more convenient. I, I live like in the border of Bangkok and mm -hmm. connecting to the south part, Rama too. So I would go to Hoa Hin. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's the nearest one for me. It's more convenient. But I think there's a lot of nice beaches in uh, in Thailand. Like in um recently last week uh not a few weeks ago i went to some way it's it was so beautiful the uh the sky is clear the sand is so soft mm -hmm. what about you uh i rarely go into the beach just i like going to mountains and also uh, you know, the beach something that not too strong not having too strong sunlight you know <laughs> But in the mountain, it can be very humid as well, isn't it? Right, right. Mm -hmm. So we talk about this one, uh, and we have a lot of cultures and beaches and food and festival. Coming up next, we have special guests, right, Nina? Yes. Uh, coming up next, we're going to 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 see uh, how or what Thailand has a lot to offer. That's something mm -hmm. that as us as a Thai people. We still don't know. We haven't seen a lot of uh, many attracting spots, parts of Thailand. And this is called maybe soft power. So let's find out what is soft power and why it has such a strong impact in Thailand. So let's find out in our live interview card.
Tainus, the Thai lifestyle channel in English language, to showcase the uniqueness of Thailand to the world. This is the accumulation of time to collect the content committed to produce the best lifestyle from Thailand. From the beginning of next step, to create the concept of learning society. To help improving the well-being of Thai people, using documentary as a tool, to improve knowledge. From branded block on free terrestrial TV. To the creation of good TV satellite network. The choice of watching content, with world-class quality, on free satellite TV, in high definition. Today, we have expanded with Tynus world-class Thai lifestyle channel, broadcasting in English 24 hours a day. To create awareness, good values, and create positive image, of Thai soft power, which helps to promote, a good image, to Thailand. Thainess, has set four goals for success. The gateway to Thailand. Good perception of Thailand. Delivery of Thai soft power to the world. Create the image of sustainability, and eco-friendly country. All of this is to create communication channels to bring Thailand to the global market. Thainess channel presenting Thai identity in the format of lifestyle. The audience will go on a journey to meet the people, culture, traditions, Thai food, and see the beautiful nature of Thailand, including Thai entertainment, Thai pop music, live festivals, with different selling points, like no one else. Tynus, and Next Step, partnered with global satellite broadcast leader, AsiaSat, to bring the Tynus channel to the world. This will bring the pride of Thai people and nation to the eyes of the world, for people to know more about Thailand in the different point of view. Okay, Ka, so welcome back to the program. So next step, a satellite TV provider service join hands together with a good TV and many professional content creator teams, introducing Tynes, as we see in the um, in the video. So I would like to welcome Kun Amon Pachom Rat, Managing Director of Next Step Company Limited. So Adi Ka. Welcome to our program, Ka. How are you today? Good, Cup. Good, Cup. <laughs> early morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, early morning, early birds get the good things. <laughs> okay, Ka. So, um, I would like to talk about the next step objective and uh, the purpose of the Thai channel, Ka. Kun Amon Pat, Ka. Um, Next step is objective is um, to create well-being for, for Thai people uh, to reduce uh, poverty uh, by using the knowledge. Like you, you have seen, you have heard about our motto that we say, uh, building the knowledge society to help local community to grow. So at present, we, we have uh, 60 channels on Good TV to provide to uh, local people nationwide. The Thai nest channel is a next jigsaw of uh, next step to build the brand image of, of Thailand. Uh, this mm -hmm. is kind of like the world class uh, lifestyle etched on it in HD uh, English, English language 24 hours on the satellite, which we, we broadcast throughout uh, Asia Pacific at the moment, at the moment, including uh, the Oce Oceania as well. This mm -hmm. is the first phase and the next Phase will move on to Europe and US as well through the satellite so that uh, our channel will be in each particular household. Uh, mm -hmm. We could talk to them clearly and telling what we have, like what trying to what we are trying to say is we are trying to introduce our soft power mm -hmm. uh, from Thailand to to their home. Our vision is to, to, to present a fresh perfect perspective of Thailand to, to the world. And um, the audience will, will see amazing uh, pictures uh, and they will journey with us with a unique experience that uh, we provided to them. 
when you talk about soft power, how is the soft power is this important to the Thai economy and tourism uh, industry? Uh, you, you see that uh, we have quite a unique uh, product if we are comparing and not product, uh, both product and services comparing with other countries, but we never brand it. We never use it, right? Uh, like we have Thai cultures, we have very beautiful natures. We, we have been working with a uh, leading international documentary and they sent just one director uh, to shoot the documentary in Thailand. But the, the rest is the crew. They use like uh, the, the Andamansi, uh, mm -hmm. They use uh, a very beautiful forest that, that we have in Kangkajan, a lot of wildlife there. But uh, it's branded by, by international uh, leading brand, not Thailand, not, not Thai brand. So this time, what we would like to do is to, to utilize uh, our resources ourselves and brand it as Thailand and made by Thai Thai crew and Thai people, not uh, just they send one director from international and use our crew and do mm -hmm. the rest. So not only the, the 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 Thai food, Thai hospitality that we we have, we also have uh, a very good Thai pop music, sports. We we also have Muay Thai, which is quite popular, and now you can see that. Uh, uh, Thai football league is getting better and better, mm. and we have lots of team in Thailand, and and we we are kind of like a school of football in Asia, I would say, mm -hmm. because a lot of uh, international uh, put their kids here uh, to to um, uh, create them uh, mm -hmm. a superstar in the field in the wrong run, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. so that I I think uh, we have lots of. Uh, soft power in Thailand, and and the last the last one that I I can see and I can notice it improving a lot is Thai drama. Mm -hmm. Now I believe that we can match with the other Asian international mm -hmm. Thai drama. The mm -hmm. storyline is getting better and better. So this is all we have, but we never show this to international at all. It's mm -hmm. all here in 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 Thailand, you know, and if you. Um, you, you just use it. I mean, mm -hmm. advertise with other other channels. Mm -hmm. uh, they will provide you just a small slot, and you can tell all of it. But this time mm -hmm. we have tiniest channels, twenty four hours in English language, mm -hmm. so we can do whatever we want to do to brand it Thailand, to build and create the image of Thailand uh, to the world. That that's okay. what, that's what I, I I I would say on. Uh, soft power that we have. Uh, let let me ask you about the perspective and the mindset of getting the soft power and being Thai. You know, in the old days when we talk about Thai language, we are the only country that speak Thai. And in the old days, we think that okay, the whole world we never understand Thai. We have to practice English. And now with the influence of from Korea, that they brings up the soft power and shows the world that very successful. Korean is the only country to except the North Korean <laughs> that speak Korean, and they brings the Korean language to the world through music, and this is helping us to reshape our mind about the Thai language. Also, can be on the world stage, and we have to stop limiting ourselves that is only the country that speak Thai and then we cannot bring Thai music or Thai language to the world. What do you think about this? Is it, is it affecting each other? Interesting. This is remind me like 30 years ago when I'm still young and uh, I met uh, for one foreigner. He said, what are you talk? We what what are you saying? I mean, we are we are talking in English and then I switched mm -hmm. to a friend of mine talking in Thai. In Thai. And he mm -hmm. said, it's it's quite amazing. He said it's like listening to the music. That mm. the the our language tonalities of Thai right. uh, wording is quite interesting comparing with other. It's quite gentle and smooth, so that they feel that oh that that's a very nice uh, language that they would like to to practice and or speak. Mm. 
So I think that this is a unique. And if you you saying that we we are the only one country uh, speaking English, uh, uh, speaking Thai, I, mm-hmm. I I think that this is our unique that mm-hmm. uh, we we have to um, to expand. So why not? They are listening to Thai music, a Thai pop music. If they have Korean music, mm-hmm. uh, why not Thai music? Go together with others, Thai culture, Thai food. Mm-hmm. We have amazing place that they would like to come. When when I've been uh, traveling and talking to international people, like people in in Europe or in 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 UK, they 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 all know Thailand, a land mm-hmm. of uh, gentle, smile, polite, mm-hmm. and they would like to come. That's why mm-hmm. we we have a lot of uh, the European people come here to retire in Chiang mm-hmm. Mai, in even in Chonburi. They also have the places where they can live. Uh, I mean, friendly uh, and have a friendly uh, chip environment with, here. With, right. Yeah, with P- Thai people get right. along well, right? Mm-hmm. So, so I think this is uh, quite unique for us uh, that we we should use our uh, so- unique power. soft power mm-hmm. uh, to invite lots of right. people around the world to come to Thailand. Right, I see this point. And another thing that quite interesting to me because your company is working with young generation, and mm-hmm. then we have a lot of saying and going on the the world. We should move out of this country, or p r o b a b l just move migrate from this country to find another country. Mm-hmm. Do you see any points in getting our younger generation understand the value of and uh, Uh, the value and of our heritage, the cultural heritage, and also other things that they might overlook, and they think, "Oh, Thailand is no longer for me. We have to move to another country." I think it's about generation perspective. And when you work with the young generation, what what do you do to get them to understand this, or you what the knowledge you provide to them? I I think uh, we have to look back. What what what's wrong with it? Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I've been uh, studying a lot on on how to develop the countries. I mean, why lot of country can build their own country within like 20 years and get mm. uh, developed, that, right? Uh, most important mm-hmm. is there's two things. One is uh, the the school, the education in school, mm-hmm. and second is the media. Mm-hmm. What we need to have is a good media that help. Providing them more experience than today. Mm. If, if you turn on TV right now, mm. it's hardly find a good content that you are going to watch. So mm. it it it's hard. It's and so difficult to educate uh, uh, Thai people to mm. having more more wider, broader mind and trying to help uh, growing the countries. That's that's why I think the new generation with mm. is. They are upsetting with this because they don't see the future. Mm-hmm. But if, like the nation, if you have a lot of uh, a startup content, mm-hmm. uh, the program like this, and they see the future that oh, there's a lot of opportunity in in Chiang Mai. I, I saw mm-hmm. a lot of opportunity there now. A lot of uh, uh, restaurant, coffee shops opening up, and they have lots of good ideas unmatched mm-hmm. with. Uh, Bangkok at all, and not uh, matching uh, better than Bangkok even some sometimes mm. that I see, or sometimes they 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 living in Udon Thani mm-hmm. and they have good idea and image and they would like to do something that unique. We we need to provide uh, this facility to them. To to provide these facilities, we probably need to to have more local channels, TV mm. channels, uh, uh, to like to the north. To the uh, mm-hmm. northeast, uh, to the south, and using the the local language to to keep on the traditions mm-hmm. there, right? And if we have that type of uh, media in local, mm-hmm. then the local product when they they produce, they can distribute only three or four countries, uh, provinces only. They they are small, so small, so they cannot. Uh, distribute nationwide, right? So if we have a good media like uh, local TV in the local, then 
it will be better for them to just uh, advertise in that local mm -hmm. in a very right price, not an, exp an expensive mm -hmm. one. Then they will start to grow slowly. Once they grow in three, three, four uh, provinces, then they will be able to expand to uh, regional and then mm -hmm. country and then export that later. But mm -hmm. we don't have that model to help them at all. I see. That's why mm -hmm. I think they feel hopeless at this time. But mm -hmm. this, this is what we are doing at the moment. Next step is mm -hmm. trying to do. To, that's why we create a good uh, TV network mm -hmm. to, and using a satellite because we would like to uh, up, make it available in local, in rural area as well. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then uh, next big thing will be how we are going to have a local channels in each particular region. That's uh, oh, an ambitious uh, goal that we would like to do, not easy one. Uh, we've been trying this for many years, like like uh, Tynes TV, mm -hmm. uh, it's been initiated like 15 years ago, mm. and started collecting the content. At that time, it's standard definition, but now uh, we we collect the 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 past seven years with high definitions. Now we have a big library enough to to create the whole channels and uh, translate all of the content into English. But, mm -hmm. but it's not all, we need to partnership with other producers as well. We, we believe that uh, the, the producers uh, can be anywhere in Thailand, in Chiang Mai, mm -hmm. in uh, mm -hmm. Thai or whatsoever, and produce according to the international format and mm -hmm. create uh, well being for them in terms of uh, production company, in terms of marketing company. That's, 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 that's what we, we, we plan to do in mm -hmm. at next step. Okay, mm -hmm. um, I would like to ask you about uh, because the channel is focusing on the cultural heritage and uh, side of Thailand and also tourism. But uh, we are in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. So I would like to ask how do you manage or cope with this challenge? And also I would like to ask you about what sort of tourists that we will receive from let's say the next normal the new I, normal the next normal we, all, all the time when i when 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 i i see thai product we 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 believe that thai product cannot be cheap thai product <laughs> has to be prestige and uh by image uh mm. premium so the price have to be expensive but when when you go when you travel abroad you pay a lot of money you get nothing from there but mm. when you come to thailand the service is really good Mm -hmm. you unmatch uh in terms of hospitalities mm -hmm. gentle that you you are going to find anywhere else in the world this is the mm -hmm. only place that's why mm -hmm. a lot of people did retire here right from from around the world mm -hmm. to retire here now you're, you're talking about uh yeah this is pandemic and this is not a short-term plan this is mm -hmm. a long-term plan so we need to to move ahead from uh comparing with other countries if we not move now then mm -hmm. after the pandemic we we cannot be positioning ourselves in in other countries uh, so we we think that this is the right time that mm -hmm. everyone stop doing everything <laughs> so this is the right time for us to move ahead and to uh put the flag of thai, thai flag in each particular country right now so after the pandemic when uh, the pandemic stopped, tourism will come back slowly. Mm -hmm. But the top of my on the head will be mm -hmm. Thailand, not any other countries. Mm -hmm. So that's why we, we've been aggressively um, introduced uh, the channels during the mm -hmm. pandemic. I see. I see. This is a good strategy. And also, do you see the results uh, so soon that you put a lot of efforts to produce, uh, I mean, the new programs too, and also find new markets as well, right? Right. Like some of the content, we can we can make it within three months. Uh, some, one of, some of the series that we have done, like Thailand from above, which is uh, using the drone shot, we take three years to collect all the footage. Wow. And uh, that's amazing because... Uh, this is the histories of Thailand in year 2020. And next 10 years, it's going to be changed. 
So uh, you you have to spend a lot of time to collect all those uh, uh, content and to show mm -hmm. to the world. And and mm -hmm. uh, I got a good feedback from international right now when they mm -hmm. saw uh, that such a beautiful pictures. Right. We should have some in the work program too, right, Kunina? Yes, that's right. Okay, Kunamon Padka, thank you very much for today's. I'm pretty sure that Thailand has a lot to offer, and I'm pretty sure that your channel will be one of the, what should I say, Kunamon Padka? Yeah, the vocal point, the vocal point for us, right? The vo yes, the vocal, the vocal for us, right? point for Thailand and for the premium tourists and to merge local to international and also international with the local as well. But for today, thank you very much, Kakunamon Pat, and I would love to invite you back on our program again. Thank you. A moment ago, we talked about, we mentioned about Chiang Mai, and we have Chiang Mai here too. What's going on in Chiang Mai? And if you know it, you really feel like, I love to go there now. You know? oh, I would love to and take photos. <laughs> right. <Because laughs> Put on my Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> we should, we should. We should we should do our program in Chiang Mai one day, you think? <laughs> yes, yes, I will. Okay, we should, do that. <laughs> we should do it there. Okay. Chiang Mai is one of Thailand's most favorite provinces of all time, as you know. The northern province of Thailand has now prepared several events to boost the economy. So let's see what they got. Okay, Thailand Rose of the North burst into bloom Tuesday with prediction wow. that the charming Chiang Mai Flower Festival 2022 will ignite a 1.5 billion baht tourism boom. A floral rainbow is unfurling across the city. And in Chalam Pakiat Park until February 15, bringing a ray of hope to the tourism re reliant city after two years of COVID lockdowns and travel bans. The event features seven flower gardens that will carpet 27 rides in dazzling colors. Look at this. Meanwhile, nightly fountain show from 6 p.m., 7 p.m., and 8.30 p.m., will delight locals and tourists at Mayuak Reservoir outside City Hall. They've mm -hmm. got lots of events coming up. Visitors must register for entry in advance as part of their COVID-19 measures. Tourists are advised to check accommodation availability and book in advance as the festival is the highlight of Chiang Mai's calendar. Meanwhile, the city also has plenty of other events to attract tourists and residents alike in February. The Chiang Mai Marathon kicks off on Saturday with runners tackling a route through Shalom Pakiat Park to Huai Tung Tao Reservoir. The One Tambon One Product Exhibition is another thing. They got a run, they're running from February 17 to 13 with the Miss Chiang Mai contest on February. 10 to 13. The city also expects to generate more than 1.5 billion baht in revenue from this event. I could not remember how long I haven't been to Chiang Mai, Kunina. Got a lot of things to do there. Me too. I remember I was there once, but mm -hmm. this event really, really makes me want to go back. Maybe, you know, you can see me in, in I don't yeah. know, in a few weeks and Apart weeks? from behind me, it will be floral, <laughs> floral <laughs> feel. You should have the floral as your background. <laughs> For now. Our, our program too, right? Okay. okay huh. So for today, uh, that wraps up for today, our Voice of the Nation morning news update. But before we go, we will leave you with a clip from Xinhua News Agency. As in China, they use robot chef to serve at the Beijing Olympic winter games in order to minimize human contact and in the middle of pandemic.
And I hope you enjoy our live program. So stay tuned with us with the latest news and information from Thailand's premier English language news source, connecting Thailand to the world from Monday to Friday, 8 to 9 a.m. And live streaming to our website, nationthailand.com, Facebook, and other social media platforms. Don't forget to click like and share. I'm Vithya Sangarun. And I am Nina Nirasha Malisa. Have a good day. Sawadikha. Sawadikha. Oh yeah, haven't you altered yet? I have, and they're coming down. Mm. From where? To minimize human contact, robots have been deployed to carry out tasks like food delivery. In the small restaurant of the main media center of the 2022 Beijing Winter Olympics, robots are not only good waiters, but also high-level chefs. They are automatic cookers, once the dish is finished, the AI system plans out the optimal route. The dish will run on the track above us and finally come to our table. Robots here can also make burgers, boil dumplings and wontons, small hot pots, and even bartending. During the games, the restaurant is expected to serve thousands of journalists and press photographers from more than 200 countries and regions, and around 10,000 staff from 200 broadcasting agencies. For the whole entire restaurant, there are totally 3,700 square meters, and we can allow more than 1,000 people dine in at the same time. In this restaurant, we have equipped more than 10 types of the smart catering equipment. Our restaurant can offer some 24-hour service, and we also offer a variety of food, for example, hella food, vegetarian food, and of course, our Chinese traditional food. And we have a special dumpling offer on that day. I, I like dumpling. Here is more than just having dinner. It's very interesting to see these robots and this automatic system. It's very, very amazing. This machine is absolutely amazing. I just blown away. I came down to see it earlier. Yeah, the mechanics are absolutely fantastic. And the food was surprisingly good. Uh, I had uh, shrimp with pineapple and uh, some broccoli with uh, chili and garlic. It was delicious, really good.